BTEC Applied Science Unit 1 Chemistry Oxidation and Reduction. We're going to talk about them later. First of all, we're going to talk a bit about displacement reactions. Now, consider this. If you put an iron nail in copper sulfate, what happens? Hopefully this will be demonstrated to you. What happens if you put an iron nail in copper sulfate? Well, uh, the nail appears to turn orange and the copper sulfate isn't blue anymore. It goes a kind of a pale orange color. So a chemical reaction has happened. What has happened here? Well, what has happened? Put an iron nail in copper sulfate and after a while, okay, it's iron plus copper sulfate goes to copper plus iron sulfate. Okay, the nail goes orange because it gets covered in copper. It gets plated in copper and the copper sulfate changes into iron sulfate. So what's happened is that the iron has taken the place of the copper and the copper has been kicked out. It has been displaced. Okay, and this is a, a displacement reaction. Looking at this, there's copper sulfate, the happy couple. Uh, Miss Iron comes along and she pinches Mr. Sulfate. Okay, and you end up with iron sulfate, the happy couple, and Miss Copper has been kicked out. Okay. That's the way it goes. So copper sulfate plus iron goes to iron sulfate plus copper, and that is a displacement reaction. Now, a displacement reaction will only happen if uh, the, the metal involved at the start is more reactive. Okay, so for example, magnesium plus copper sulfate, yes because magnesium is more reactive. Iron plus copper sulfate, yes, because iron is more reactive than copper. Zinc plus cal calcium sulfate, no, nothing's going to happen, okay, because zinc is less reactive than calcium. So you look at these and tell me, will there be a reaction? If there is a reaction, then what will the products be? Uh, or will there just be no reaction, okay? Notice, by the way, on this reactivity series, uh, carbon is there. That's interesting. We'll come back to that later. Fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. What group is that? What is this group called? Hopefully you recognize this is group seven, and it is the halogens. Yes, group seven. Now they can do a bit of displacing as well, okay? A more reactive halogen can displace a less reactive one. For example, uh, chlorine plus sodium bromide will give you sodium chloride plus bromine, okay? The chlorine is more reactive than the bromine and it can displace it. So halogens can be involved in displacement reactions as well. Notice, however, the difference is that reactivity goes upwards with the halogens. Fluor fluorine is the most reactive. So, oxidation and reduction. Now, in a lot of these reactions, what we've seen is uh, an ion becoming an atom and an atom becoming an ion. A metal atom losing an electron or two electrons and becoming an ion and when this happens we say it has been oxidized when an atom uh, a metal atom loses one or more electrons we say it is oxidized so oxidation is loss of electrons and then when an, an metal ion gains one or two electrons we say it is reduced Okay, so reduction is gain of electrons. If a metal atom loses an electron, it is oxidized. If a metal ion gains an electron, it is reduced. 
there's one way of remembering this very useful oil rig. Oxidation is loss, reduction is gain. Oil rig. Okay? So in a displacement reaction, one metal is oxidized and the other is reduced. For example, in our iron and copper sulfate, uh, our iron atoms are oxidized and our sulfate, our copper ions, beg your pardon, are reduced. So oxidation and reduction, it's an example of a redox reaction because you get reduction and oxidation happening. What we can do for these metal atoms and ions is write something called a half equation. And this shows what happens in terms of electrons, but just to the atom or the ion. Okay, Cu2 plus, plus two electrons becomes copper. Yeah, the copper ions are reduced. Uh, Fe minus two electrons becomes Fe2 plus. The iron atoms are oxidized and these are called half equations and you need to be able to do these. Hopefully your teacher will give you a worksheet and you'll have plenty of practice doing these. Here's a very good video if you want to know a bit more about redox reactions. This guy is a bit clever. He explains lots of things very well. And here are some questions for you to have a go at. Uh, a piece of magnesium is put in copper chloride. Explain how you know a reaction will happen. Write a word equation and write half equations to show what happens to the atoms and the ions, the metal atoms and ions. Uh, number two, notice that hydrogen and carbon appear on the reactivity series. Okay, sometimes they behave like metals. I mean, with hydrogen, it's not surprising if you look at where it is on the periodic table, but sometimes it behaves like a metal. Uh, in a blast furnace, what we use is carbon to displace iron from iron oxide. Uh, what else could be used? What else could displace iron? Uh, but we don't, we use carbon. What are the advantages of using carbon instead of aluminium or magnesium or calcium. Why is carbon used in a blast furnace?